Okay, guys. This is it. Melbourne, night two. Sloppy seconds. We all come from the same primordial ooze. Release, breathe, experience life, and release. Understand, but don't squeeze too tight. Release. Release on three. One, two, three. Release. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our proud honor to introduce to you in his Melbourne Day butt, Joey Cheesy. Hey, Melvin. I'm going to need some help with this song. I thought it might be a fun way to kind of warm up the crowd. Would you please walk in? If you're not warmed up, something's wrong with you. Could you give a big Melvin welcome to one of the best up and coming comics in this town, country, island, continent, sort of both, right? Damien Power! Woo! Joey Cheesy, everybody. Never had to follow that before, so that's fucking crazy shit. You guys, you, you guys pumped or what? Yeah. yeah, fuck yeah, let's kick this shit off. You ready to rock? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm not doing, I don't know how to do any of this shit. Um, I wish I did because I get more pussy. I have no idea how to do it. I'm doing stand up comedy. I gotta get to know you guys a bit. Hands up if you're in a relationship. Yeah. Some people groaning and booing, obviously single, masturbating right now. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Cool. Cool, uh, put your hands up if you're in love. Yeah, sorry man, I didn't mean to fuck up your night. These two arguing right now. Put your hand up, I'm not putting my hand up. I'm putting my hand up for both of us. You enjoy your wank on the couch alone tonight. My hand's up here. Yeah, it's hard to tell, isn't it? It's hard to tell with love as a human being. It's confusing. Because you look at someone, your heart beats, your palms get sweaty and all that shit. That's not love. That's just evolution releasing chemicals in your brain, telling you to fuck that person. Because <laughs> your kid will be big and strong and not get the flu. That's all that is. That's why, to me, love, you can only tell with clarity with love when the chemicals are worn off. They've served their purpose, they've been released, whatever that is. That's why, to me... Love is like when you're watching porn and you come and you keep watching. <laughs> that's love. <laughs> to me. And that's, that's what's so confusing about being a human. We have all these un primitive unconscious urges and desires. Sigmund Freud called it the unconscious mind in all of us. Dangerous primitive urges and instincts bubbling away in all of us. Oh, I'm going to fuck her. I'm going to kill that. I'm going to eat that. Run away in all of us. And you're in a business meeting. <laughs> in a suit with a coffee. John, yes, Richard, I think the uh, GST here is a little bit over. I'm going I'm to take a shit right here. <laughs> that's what makes it so hard to tell. And, th and that's what's in control with us. That's what's in control. It's the primitive urges and desires. You ever been single for a while? Ever been single for a while and everyone you see is the one? You ever been single for years and you're like, she's the one. I haven't had sex for five years. She's the one. <laughs> Look at her. She's alive. <laughs> She's the one. I've done that. And I've had it happen to me as well in a weird psycho kind of way. I was walking home one night from the valley and this girl started walking beside me. And then I started walking quicker. She started walking quick. We're racing. We're fucking racing now. And I walk quick. I'm fueled by panic. And, and then she just turns to me in the middle of the street and goes, oh my God, I can't believe we're walking home at exactly the same place, exactly the same time. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm like, not really, we're in a major metropolitan area. She's like, no, this is crazy. Oh my God, she's doing the thing, putting all her shit onto me. Oh my God, where are you from? What do you do? 
and all this. And then mid-conversation, this is absolutely true. She goes, wait here. She runs inside to her apartment, comes back out and gives me a rock <laughs> with the word destiny written on it. <laughs> yeah, she gave me the destiny rock. How fucking crazy. As if that isn't the unconscious mind just going, I need a family, I need to reproduce. Here's a rock. <laughs> just take a rock. I gave her my number. Because she's obviously a complete psycho. And men love psycho women, don't we? We love a psycho chick. Yeah, we love a fucking... Yeah, crazy shit. Let's, like, let's put our dick in this hurricane. Let's see... <laughs> let's see where this goes. Yeah, exactly. And women, you like a bad boy, don't you? You love a bad boy. Oh, look at him over there with the shovel. What's he doing? <laughs> What's he doing over there? What's he doing near that bin? What's he up to? He looks like he might kill my mum. He's cute. <laughs> Over there working on a dirt bike. What's he up to? Dangerous, primitive urges and instincts. The greatest love in my life is my family. I have a three-year-old son and my partner. She's from Estonia. She's from Eastern Europe. And when my son was born, I went over there to meet the other half of the family and they invited me over to have a sauna and to run into the snow naked. That's an Estonian thing they do. I invite over to have a sauna and run in the snow naked. It's, you can't, like... That's the first time I met all the men in the family. They were standing there naked in front of me. You can't not look at a man's penis. That's the first fucking thing you... I wasn't a freak about it. I wasn't like, G'day, mate, I'm from Australia. Let's have a look. <laughs> What's going on in Estonia? Good to meet you. But that's a, that's a cultural shock, isn't it? That's a cultural shock. Like, if you see a penis at an Australian family gathering, something's gone horribly wrong, hasn't it? <laughs> Uncle Barry's pissed again. <laughs> He's doing the helicopter. Keep him away from the kids. <laughs> Uncle Barry, on the rums. He's on the rums. Uncle Barry. Anyway, we're in the sauna. And we're in the sauna and we're doing It's great, you know. And we, I, we go to run out. And I want to be the first one to go out and, and get into the snow. I want to be the first one to do it. And I, I get to the door and the door gets stuck in the snow. I'm pushing it, trying to get out and it's stuck. And they all come to help and I could feel the on the back and they're pushing... That's the thing though, cultural difference. They're totally comfortable in their sexuality. Totally comfortable. It's like penis on back, no problem. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Penis on their back, of course. But I could just see, I could just hear a guy I went to school with in Queensland just watching that. Just watching that, just gone. Fucking gay, mate. That's fucking gay. <laughs> You're a poof, mate. That's fucking gay. Pushing a sauna door open with a bunch of naked Baltic men, mate. That's gay. Really gay. They did a study that showed that really homophobic men are often aroused by homosexual material. So really we know that guy would have been like, gay, poof, bloody, <clears throat> push a bit harder, fellas, get around the back. <laughs> it's a bit like rugby, isn't it? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Cultural differences. You notice it coming from Australia and travelling to Europe. You notice it. Like they have culture and shit. It's weird. Like in Europe, they value the arts. They value the arts in Europe. Theatre is on the news in Europe. It's like a big deal. We're more sport in Australia. That's kind of our art. Like I was watching um, Fo uh, Rugby League on Foxtel and uh, the commentator said, well, that play was a work of art. These players are artists. That was a Picasso, maybe a Pollock. I'm like, really? Really? I don't think a Rugby League player is ever gonna say anything profound. You know what I mean? I don't think a rugby league player is ever going to say anything profound or intelligent. They're not going to be at half time like, so, mate, how was the game? Well, mate, you know, at the end of the day, it is difficult considering all humans subconsciously fear death. <laughs> you know, so we attach ourselves to bigger ideas like fame, nationalism and religion because those ideas live on forever and unconsciously fearing death, we attach ourselves to those ideas. That's why there's so many bloody wars, mate. We're all fighting for our mortal ideology. But even considering that, the boys tackled hard. <laughs> Now, they done good. Before they went out there, tried to psych them up. I said, you know what, fellas? This, this mightn't even be real. Anyway, <laughs> that bit sometimes doesn't work. Um, thank you. Yeah, one of, the, one of the hangovers from our unconscious primitive urges and desires is uh, 
is uh, group behaviour in humans. We love being in groups. We identify ourselves in groups, race, nation, religion, whatever it is. We're stupid in groups as humans, aren't we? We're stupid in groups, in big groups. I can feel it in the air. I feel like I've had a good enough speech. I'll be able to rally together and we go and invade some shitty suburb like Frankston. <laughs> fuck, yeah, fuck all, the, fuck all the single mums and create a super bogan that's just a tooth <laughs> and a V8 supercar jacket. Just a tooth and a V8 supercar jacket. House lights off? Yeah. Yep, stupid in groups. Stupid in groups. One person does something, they're crazy, like Julian Assange. He's crazy. But if a whole group does something, it's culture. Like I was waiting for a bus in Sydney. A dude really inspired me. He was waiting for the bus and he just went, What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Now, to me, that dude's more normal than the receptionist at work. <laughs> She's into celebrity gossip. At least he's asking the right questions. <laughs> That's what we should all be asking at this point in human history. North Korea, what the fuck? Justin Bieber, what the fuck? <laughs> it's exactly what we should be asking. Stupid in groups. Easiest group to belong to is your race. Wake up in the morning and go, oh, I'm white. That was easy. <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, as Australians, we are regarded as some of the most racist people on the planet. If you type into Google, are Australians, it fills in the rest racist. Just automatically, are Australians racist, I think is what you were looking for. And then underneath that, the next most popular search is, are Australians nice? Really sums up the international perception of us, doesn't it? They're racist, but they're nice about it. <laughs> they'll tell you to fuck off out of the country, but they'll give you directions to the airport. <laughs> off mate we're full take a left on bridge <laughs> don't go during traffic mate it's a nightmare you shouldn't even be driving we know about that <laughs> well we have a horrible racist history we all know that but one of the reasons we become that racist stereotype is because the international media does love a story about australian racism they love it recently a korean man was attacked a one-off attack in sydney and the Korean media blew it up to be this massive story that Australian racists were targeting Koreans, which is ridiculous because racists can't tell the difference between Koreans and Chinese. <laughs> That's the whole fucking point. There's no racists out there going, we'll get the Koreans this week. Which ones are they, mate? I don't know. I don't fucking know, mate. That's why I got into racism. I don't want to have to think. <laughs> There's so many rules with you now, mate. It's hard to imagine an Australian racist going to the trouble of understanding the physical and cultural differences between different Asian nationalities and then still being racist. Like there's a racist out there right now. What are you up to, mate? Oh, I'm just researching a bit of Korean culture. Oh, yeah, look at that, mate. They got pottery that dates back to 8,000 BC. Yeah. Fucking early pottery cunts. I'll kill you. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. Pottery that, you cunt. It's bullshit. good living in Australia. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. A lot of fines and rules and regulations in Australia. Very over-governed, unless you're a mining company. <laughs> Am I right? A mining company in Queensland and New South Wales can come onto your private property without your permission, drill a kilometre into the ground, inject 600 chemicals and extract gas. 600 different chemicals. I don't think they know what they do. They're just like, fuck it, put all of them. <laughs> There's vanilla essence down there. They don't even know. <laughs> They're allowed to do that shit. Oh yeah, they're allowed to do that. But I get fined 300 bucks for driving my car with an L-plate on it when I'm not a learner. Yeah, because that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez, look at that learner, he's confident. <laughs> it's fucking dangerous. Put the chemicals down the hole. Don't smoke near buildings. Dredge the Great Barrier Reef. Stop walking fast, mate. You're not allowed to swear in public. Bullshit. 60 Minutes did a special on this coal seam gas mining and in the special they had an Australian farmer and his creek had become flammable as a result of the mining. You've really got to laugh how laid back Australians are, haven't you? He had the lady from 60 Minutes with him. He's like, yeah, love, this is my creek over here. This is the one I was telling you about. <laughs> yeah, nah, there's something wrong there. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, never used to be on fire. <laughs> it's 
good for fishing, though. They come out cooked. <laughs> I had an interview with the Minister for Mines about it. He looked terrified. The lady was like, so what chemicals are they using in this process? She's like, nothing. Vanilla essence, nothing. <laughs> she was like, shouldn't you know what chemicals they're putting into the artesian basin? And no shit, this was his answer. You can see it on YouTube. He just goes, um. <laughs> that was his fucking answer. She just went on, it's just, um. Which is like the equivalent of going, is she still there? <laughs> Fuck, she's still there. La, 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 la. Whenever a politician gets defensive, they're hiding. Whenever someone in an argument gets defensive, they're hiding something. Oh, you can't say that. I didn't do that. They're hiding. Put it to the test tonight. Go up to someone jokingly and just go, mate, I wasn't going to say anything, but that hat makes you look a bit like a sex offender. <laughs> they go, what a sex offender, mate? That's bullshit. I'm not a sex offender. You can't. Definitely a sex offender. Definitely. <laughs> That's how I screen them. Yep, now I've got a kid. People coming into the house will be like, mate, that shirt's a bit pedophile -y. If he goes, yeah, Dame, I'm a pedophile, mate, where's your kid? <laughs> he's all right. Because <laughs> he's able to joke about it. It's obviously not true, you know. Unless you're comfortable with it, but you'll never stop those ones anyway. But back to the... <laughs> Come on, Melbourne. I feel like we're friends now. I feel like we're friends. Yeah. One of the other things about mining Queensland, they're dredging the Great Barrier Reef to build five of the largest coal ports in the world, threatening our World Heritage listing on the Great Barrier Reef. Pretty big deal. I don't know. I mean, we don't even hear about it. We're not talking about it. It's not even our consciousness. I think, it's, I think as Australians, we're very politically passive. I reckon if the government said tomorrow we had to wear black cocks on our heads, we'd be like, fucking bullshit. <laughs> Gotta wear a black cock on my head now. This is bullshit, mate. I got a $50 fine if I take my cock off. Unbelievable. Unfucking bullshit. I can't work. I can't get in. The fucking cock's in the way. <laughs> you gonna protest? No, I'm not gonna protest. Gonna watch the footy. Change the channel with my cock. <laughs> Sorry to be a downer. Hands up if you're depressed. <laughs> that is the correct reaction. Of course, we're, of course we're in the highest rate of depression in human history. Of course we are. We're bombarded with images of higher expectations. Here's a holiday you're not on. Advertising. Here's a holiday you're not on. Here's a car you don't own. Here's George Clooney. Here's someone better looking than you. Here's money you don't have. More, 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 more. Eventually you just get depressed. You just go, what have I got? What have I got? All I've got is clean drinking water, a house, a home, friends, family, a car, a phone, the freedom to travel, the freedom to express myself and my health. <laughs> this is bullshit. Where's my fucking helicopter? This is bullshit, man. Kanye's got a helicopter. It's bullshit. And that's why we do drugs. Um, let's be real. That's why we do drugs. I think we've chosen an interesting drug as a culture. It's not really, I think alcohol, I don't know if that's going to really move us forward culturally or evolutionarily as a, as a species. I'm not sure if alcohol was the right choice to legalise. Uh, I, was walk, I, was, I was driving past a pub in, in Queensland and a dude tried to tackle my car. <laughs> that's, that's alcohol. That guy's probably an accountant. I think the GST on the, give him a few fucking drinks. Oh, a Corolla, I'll give that a go. <laughs> I just... I just feel like if we, if we legalise a drug that actually expanded our consciousness and took it as a culture, a drug that expanded our consciousness and made us look at life from a different perspective, I think we'd realise how ridiculous our lives are. Do you ever feel like a mouse on a wheel sometimes? Work hard to pay off the mortgage, work hard to pay off the car, work hard to buy product, work hard to buy product, work hard to buy product, die. <laughs> Give that mouse magic mushrooms, man. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be like, fuck the wheel, I'm going to do yoga with the cat. <laughs> can't smoke pot anymore for a variety of reasons, one of them being that I'm a father now, so the days of getting stoned and staring at the oven are over. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, pot's funny, isn't it? It's, it's changed, you know what I mean? Like, pot used to be like a relaxing thing, you know? Like, people, you see people in the 70s smoking joints, Ooh, you know, having fun. Pot isn't like that anymore, it's fucking strong. People don't smoke joints, they smoke contraptions. Great, my friends made a bong out of a swimming pool. <laughs> 
was absolutely... They had a bin upside down, like a plastic bin upside down in the pool. They, they'd melted in a tin cone, sealed that in. They'd lowered the bin cone thing upside down in the pool. And they stuffed that with like an ounce of weed just so the cone's sticking out. They stuffed it with weed. They're burning it with like an oxy torch. <laughs> And they're burning when they're pulling the bin up in the in the pool, so that's sucking smoke into the bin. The bin is filling with smoke, filling with smoke, filling with smoke. Then his mates swam up into the bin. Yeah. Once you're swimming into bongs, it's time to do a TAFE course, isn't it? It's time to. You guys have been wonderful. I've been Damien Power. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Alright guys, we are rolling. You rolling? Yeah. Quiet on the set! Quiet on the set! Quiet on the set! They don't know what it's, they don't understand the language. They don't understand the language. Okay. Go. And self-action. Hey, what's up? We're Tenacious D and we're here with our homeboy, Damien Power. Yeah. Most talented stand-up to come out on the scene in quite some time. Mm. We personally vouch for him as being the funniest motherfucker in town. Book him in your club. Book him in your theater. Book him down oh. We take full responsibility if he takes his shit on the stage. Which he won't. Because you got the fucking tenacious guarantee. Am I right, Cage? <laughs> You're so right. Got anything to say, Damien? Thanks, guys. Um, I, but I may take a shit on the stage still. If that's cool with you guys, that's still part of the guarantee. Of course, that's part of the guarantee. Sick. Um, and then I'm happy. Cut. Rolling. Quiet on the set. And self action. Yo, what's up? We're Tenacious D. And we're telling you to come see, not us, but Damien Power. The kid's a comer. We vouch for him. Hey, do yourself a favor. Go see the show. It's good. Um, uh, the end. <laughs> <laughs>